very much, honey. <laughs> which, which one? Yeah, good one. The short hair tall guy with excellent diction. Gotcha. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from Whitehorse, Yukon, Canada's very own Tomo in a cat. Don't come on, come on! Makes it easier to take pictures. Hey, well, I'm very excited to be here because I've never been here before. Yes, this is a great crowd. This is this is the second time that the show has happened in the city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. What a what a this is a good good number of people to show up for the second show. Pardon me? I'll bet you were. <laughs> That's how you guys are. You show up for everything. <laughs> I'm the most dedicated, loyal, I use this term often, but rapid fan base I've ever had. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for having us. Um, let's get into some questions because we have a lot of people here. Hi. Um, I'm a huge fan, but I watched Rift World last week on the internet. What was it like to film that? What was it like to? To film it? Yeah. Oh, it, it was a blast. Yeah. I, uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, Erin Carplack, who's the other me, is a, uh, she's a dear friend of mine. And uh, we actually went to acting school together many, many, many years ago. And uh, we've even been roommates in LA. She, and Erin's really good at that. So she's had a lot of experience doing comedy. She did a series called uh, Being Erica uh, for five years. Very, very talented actor. Um, when you get the opportunity to shoot with a good friend of yours who's, who's very good with, with that, uh, that vein, that tone of, of material, uh, it makes your job so much easier. And then on top of it, you're a good friend of yours, it just, it makes it fun. You know, the, the challenging thing about it was, we obviously had a limited budget, so there's only so many takes, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't, uh, you can't make it perfect. You, you, you just gotta kinda go for it. You gotta trust in what you're doing. And, I hope you bang it off. I, I think we did a pretty good job. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. We had fun. What'd you think? What was it? What did you think? I thought it was great. Okay, good. So you good. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. and also had some serious When she didn't answer me right away, I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, what'd you think? You're like... <laughs> I like the best. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, and all the characters that you've played across the series and everything, a lot of them, in fact all of them, have got redeeming values and uh, they've got honor. Even the bad guys, which really haven't been all that evil. So it's really strange because I actually don't have any of you. <laughs> and that's what I was going to ask because you're... <laughs> Somebody really badass evil like Mark Shepard does. <laughs> well, it's, it's easy for Mark, right? No. <laughs> um, yeah. Listen, I put it out there a few years ago because you know the for a large part of my career when I started off in significant shows like Battlestar, I did play characters like that, which it was an honor to play those characters. And, I mean, the writing was exceptional. It you know makes your job uh, uh, easier. Uh, I'm happy that I, I had that chapter, but right after I was like, it would be a lot of fun to play some evil characters. So I got some evil characters. I asked for it, I put it out there, and they came to me. And you know, dude, it's, it's a blast to shoot that too. I'm, I'm all about trying as many things as I can as an artist in this short lifetime that I have, because 
you know, a career goes by, man. I can't tell you how how fast the last seven years has gone by. It's it's fascinating to me sometimes. It's scary. So I want to challenge myself. I want to try everything. I want to do it all. <laughs> Song, dance, uh, comedy, horror, all of it. Whatever I can do. Uh, yeah, and hopefully it's coming. You know, we're 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 you know, I'm 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 actively trying to make my own stuff too because uh, you know, if there's one thing I've learned, just you know, going back to that point of the last seven years going by so fast, you can't just sit around and wait for the industry to give it to you. Also, you've got to you've got to actively do your own stuff. So, yeah. Well, thank you. I don't know if I answered your question, but kind of. <laughs> I answered my own question. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Um, there were a lot of times in season nine where, like, you and Sam essentially had to play the same character. So I was just wondering, like, if you and Jared had a lot of co collaboration on that, and how that went about. Yeah, we really didn't. Um, <laughs> at all. It's funny because uh, I've told the story many, many times, but I'll tell it again for those of you who haven't heard it. I thought that I was coming in and I would be playing uh, Ezekiel first. I thought I was the first one, and then he would have to kind of go and you know take from what I did, which I thought was fantastic. <laughs> That's easy. And then the day I was shooting, the first day I was shooting, um, the director asked me, he's like, so do you want to see what Jared has done with this guy? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean, what, 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 what he's done? And he's like, well, we, we shot a scene already with, with Jared from you. <laughs> Um, I think that would probably be a good idea. <laughs> Maybe. And so he said, yeah, but we gotta hurry because we've got five minutes before we leave. So. <laughs> okay then. Let's see that right now, quickly, please. So he showed it to me, and uh, Jared was doing some fantastic stuff. Uh, uh, his physicality was really impressive. He, you know, he had a certain cadence with the way he was speaking. Um, it's hard to incorporate, you know, something like that very quickly, but I did the best I could with the choices that I made. So he, he really, you know, he set the precedent, and rightly so. I mean, it's Jared, it's his show, he's, he's, he's the one playing. You know, it, it was good that he went first. So I, I took from, uh, as much as I could from what he did, and, uh, and, and incorporated and did my own thing. Yeah. Thank you. You've gotten the chance to be a part of a lot of really cool sci-fi and kind of other cult shows, and a lot of those shows are really known for you know having very passionate uh, fan bases. So I was wondering, in your experience, how has the supernatural fandom kind of been really alike a lot of the other fan bases you got to interact with? How have they been? Like alike? How are alike. they similar? Um, but then you know what sets the supernatural fandom apart, and when you get to interact with them? Um. Well, I think a, a point I could make right now is like, for instance, if I were to bring up Battlestar, it was it was an interesting show because it it was so political and it was, it was such a uh, it was such a, an interesting, provocative social commentary. It was a, it was a it was a it was a drama. And it was it, it came on in a very um, tumultuous and changing time in our, in our history. And, and, it was commentary on what was happening at that time. So we had a very broad audience, and they weren't necessarily genre people. They were people from all walks. Like a lot of our audience, uh, a lot of our fans, who became our solid fans, never had really watched genre shows. And it took them a while to get on to Battlestar just because of the title. You know, Ron Moore said many times that the title, uh, Battlestar Galactica, because it's so, you know, everyone associates it immediately with the original show that that it worked against us in the beginning. A lot of people wouldn't give the show a chance because of our title. Like, they almost felt like we should just give it a different name. Um, but a lot of those people just weren't genre fans. And also, social media at the time was really in its early inception. So things have changed so much dramatically that, since then. So I, I would like to say a lot of genre fans are, are passionate, they love their shows, but with you guys in particular, you've really run with the whole social media thing. And it's incredible what's happened with this show. It's incredible that the numbers have gone up. 
and it's you know it's later years. Like it, it's unheard of for a series to have its numbers go up in the ninth and tenth season. That does not happen. It does not happen. But it's happening today because you've got a whole new generation of fans who are marathoning the show on Netflix and then <laughs> very right? yeah, because you guys have been so active and so vocal on social media that that, that you know never so many attention. The numbers are going up. The show's popularity is growing. This amazing fandom is growing. You know, you guys, you guys are different and I'd set you apart because of uh, you truly love this show so much and you really do have a unique community and it's very supportive. And I've seen examples of that with just how you guys have supported, you know, my little web series, Rift World, uh, since it was, you know, like started off with the portal and just even in the last little while with Jared and Jensen uh, uh, giving a tweet out and, you know, my phone almost exploding <laughs> because it was just, the Twitter just couldn't handle them out. You guys retweeting and, and commenting on the fact that he had tweeted, you know. So yeah, you guys are you guys are a very unique and passionate fan. I'm, I'm very appreciative and I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. Uh, so I know that I, I hear that you have very good pronunciation and elocution, and I was wondering if that's from acting school. Always, that's, that's how he introduces me every time. I really pressure's on now. Like I can't ever stumble across a word or slur. I've got to do like vocal warm-ups for <laughs> because of Richard. Because I can't just be tired guy in the morning and like not articulate now because of what his precedent is. Or do you speak like a different language, uh, and that's why you have such good? Um, I, no, I, I don't know. I guess it's just being an actor. I guess you know. Uh, I tend to, I, I like to be prepared. I'm someone who works very hard at being prepared when, I, when, I, when I'm performing or doing public speaking or whatever. Not that I always do, but 20 minutes ago, I was having breakfast in bed and a cup of coffee and thinking, I like my life. <laughs> do you speak a different language? Um, I have very rusty French, but I, I, I'm making a point of getting it back. I was in French version when I was a kid, so it's definitely in there. <laughs> I have, uh, I can sound like I speak French, I just, um, I'm not confident in, in, in conversing in it, like very, I saw the accent and everything, and, um, you know, I spoke a little bit of broken uh, upper Tanana, my, my mother's language when I was a kid, so yeah, I, I mean, I grew up with it, I have the capacity for it, but I'm, I, I, I don't have another language to believe I couldn't say with full confidence that I'm bilingual. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering that since Gadriel has played such an important role in the supernatural universe with Guard of Eden and being in prison for such a long time, if you ever had trouble relating to him and how you got <laughs> over that? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, oftentimes characters are, are, are challenging, but I think you just you made the biggest point, which I really tried to uh, stay true to is that I felt like Ed Drew was, he was obviously a little broken. He was, he was so consumed with, he, he'd have to be a little insane. You know, <laughs> being in prison for that long and being tortured. And he, he was so consumed with redemption and, and getting back to heaven and regaining his good name that he was, you know, he ended up doing horrible, horrible things to do it. He was, he was misguided and, and he had this reverence for, for you know, for the wrong, the wrong man, and he, he followed and trusted him, and, and he realized far too late that he was making the wrong decisions, and he couldn't really come back from that. But I, you know, that's one thing, the, the point that you made, I just tried to be true to that, that uh, no, I think he wasn't quite right in the head. <laughs> you know, it took him a while. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, okay, breathe, Jen. Um, <laughs> so like, I watched Battlestar from the very first minute. I love that show so much. You are actually my favorite character. Oh, thank you very much. So I'm just curious, did, was there anything you learned playing Hilo that you brought to Gadriel? Was there anything that I learned playing Hilo? Yeah, any yeah. elements of Hilo that kind of blended in Gadriel? Uh, well, I, I probably just learned things as an actor playing Hilo that I brought to Gadriel. You know, um, I, I made this point once before for any of the young actors in the audience, but 
Um, I realized on Battlestar the first time that I, I, I truly understood this, and I understood it in the first season, um, that it's such a collaborative process in that even though the things are written a certain way, you can really influence the direction of your character and the arc by your performance. So do your work, bring your own stuff to the table, and stay true to it, because you can greatly influence the arc of your character and take it in a different direction. Because I would argue that the dream was written a certain way, and I fought against that a little bit, you know? And, uh, and it ended up being, uh, in the end, I think it brought it full circle. I think, you know, I think the writers, I'm not taking anything away from them. They, 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 they're fantastic on this show. I mean, they, um, they had an idea of where it was going to go. You can, you can really do that. I discovered that on Battlestar. Uh, sometimes the scene is written a certain way because it's the C storyline or B storyline, and you know the writers are already overworked and they're trying to to serve the the, the main storyline, the A storyline. They can only focus on it. So the C storyline, uh, it's to the detriment of it. Sometimes you know it's it's rushed. It's it's surface level. They haven't put a ton of thought into it. They're like, well, he's doing this, and then he's going to end up here. In Battlestar, I discovered very quickly. Some of the scenes I wouldn't like, and I just felt like they were. It, that was a massive show. I mean, the cast was huge on that show, as you know. We had so many storylines to serve, so I felt that uh, Grace Park and I, we, we would just do extra work. And we'd be like, okay, you know what? Instead of this actually happening, this is what the lines say we're doing, or this is what this, they're trying to point us in this direction. Let's actually make it this. Let's play opposite to that. Because we can, you know, let's try it out. And we come in with this extra work and these extra choices. And we have the writers come up to us after and be like, wow, man, what, what, what were you doing there? What was going on with that? Like, I mean, that was amazing. Like, we've got, we have to write for that. And I was like, oh. Oh, wow. I was like, that's amazing. I can actually manipulate this. I have more control than I thought. I really notice in Fredrill, I'm obsessed with dialogue, I'm a writer myself. And oh, amazing, yeah. I felt like they wrote him as kind of cold and detached, but you made him warm and brought so much more depth to his character that, I don't know about everybody else, but I was so mad that they killed you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but I was so trying bad. to do that. Still they, bad. They, they, a lot of the scenes were written, you know, like where he's he's looking at Metatron and, you know, he's he's all for him. He's, he's not doubting him. He's, 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 he's Completely devoted and, 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 and without any uh, you know grievances about these killing other angels or what have you. Like there's no like that drill in the corner is torn or you know, he's, he's worried about what is happening. He's just you know he's there and he's committed and what have you. I played against that. I you know I I, I had to play against that because I, I yeah he was once God's number one angel. You know he had to have like I said he was a little broken in the beginning, but then it, you know things started working. He's like mm, I don't know. Right choices here. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Uh, Hi. Hi. Uh, do you like seeing the special effects that they add in after the show? You know, what when it airs live? Do I like seeing the special effects? Mm -hmm. uh, very much so. Because I'll tell you, uh, uh, when you see it without it, that's what we do as actors. We have to create that, you know. That's why, um, I don't know, sometimes when we get to work, uh, I, I, you know, I've had some great experiences in the studio, because obviously you shoot in the studio a lot, but I'll, I'll tell you one of the best times I ever had was shooting, you know, the first few episodes, and pretty much the first half of the season of Battlestar, because I was the guy who was in the studio. I was the one who was running around the planet, so all my stuff was outside, being chased by, you know, imaginary silence and stuff, and that was great. <laughs> it's a great movie outdoors, man. It's awesome. You know, you can, the environment's all there for you. It's, 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 uh, it's easier for the imagination. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I was just curious if you, what you were getting into when you took on the role for, for Get Real, if you knew about all of this about the supernatural fans. If you watch the show at all, if you knew that pretty much as soon as you shine up to be an actor on this show, you're signing your life away to this convention. <laughs> I didn't actually realize that. 
you know, I'm a Vancouver guy. I, you know, I, I live in LA part of the year, depending on what's happening with work. Um, I've done that for a long time. But Vancouver is a home base for me, and it's such an iconic show there. It started around the same time that, that, uh, that uh, Battlestar started. So, it, and just continuing, continuing. I mean, it's, it's had such a long career. Everyone knows the supernatural in Vancouver. It's, it's employed so many of the actors. You've always heard about the fan base. I'm, I'm, I've been in the genre universe for a very long time. So I'm used to, you know, passionate fans. But you guys, you guys are, you guys are something else. <laughs> I'm very just I'm grateful and, and honored to be a part of this because it's, it's been excellent. This 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 moving show that happens you know once a month basically in a different American cities it's fantastic, man. You know, it's once a month I show up, I get to meet you guys, we get to hang out on seat. This is my favorite thing is the Q and A. I, you know I get to hang out with you guys and answer some questions and have a little fun and it's great. I, I enjoy the whole process, man. You guys are very very receptive and warm crowd. How often you're still approached by fans that are upset that you killed Kevin? <laughs> Say it again. I was, I was wondering how often you're still approached by fans that are upset that you killed Kevin. Oh yeah, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> you know it's kind of cute. It's, it's a love hate thing. You're so upset you killed Kevin. I'm really I'm, I'm upset you died too. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I can do it. Hi. Um, okay, so if you could play if you could play any other character aside from Gadriel in the entire series, whether it be an existing character or like a monster, demon, etc., who or what would it be? Mm. Who would you play? <laughs> See if I'm dressed as Dean right now. Sassy. Sassy. <laughs> um, Crowley. Uh, Crowley would be fun. Crowley would be fun. A big, tall version. <laughs> That would be fun. When I saw that scene where he's getting massaged from that beautiful woman, um, I looked very happy. I remember I was like, that would have been a good role. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Tomo. Um, Hi. I am a huge Dollhouse fan. I watched from the very... I watched from the very first episode, and um, one of the things I always just absolutely latched onto with that show was the complexity of the characters and the, the level of the craft that all of you displayed in performing every single week. Um, and I, a lot of the other characters, most of them, um, ended up very abruptly becoming different people throughout the show, but your character in particular had a very gradual arc um, and a very strong sense of inner morality. And I was wondering, like, if the show hadn't gotten foxed, um, and, and if the last episode had had a different outcome, where you would have liked to see Paul progress throughout later seasons, and what you would have liked to have done with that character? Um, that's a really good question. I think... Even if the show had had one more season, it would have been it would have been incredible what we could have done, where we could have gone. Uh, personally, as an actor, uh, I think it was inevitable in the storyline that, that we, we probably would have got to the point where Paul was imprinted with some different characters too. And as Joss does, like nobody else, he's able to balance serious dramatic tone with his very very witty and smart humor. You know, he can always throw in comedy at the darkest moments. And he does it so well. It's very, his writing style is very specific and, and he's so good at that. Um, I would have loved to have seen that though. I would have loved to have seen Paul and the different characters. And it, whether it was finding a more serious tone, it would, have, it would have been challenging. But I think just, just, 
I felt my character in the beginning, they were having to rush things or they were having to manipulate it because things were changed from the original pilot. Hmm. And it could have gone in a different direction somewhat. And it would have been nice to see him and uh, Echo's character progress in a different way, in a true way. Where they really just kind of got over that hump and started committing. You know, we did the 10 year jump, and if they're in the future, I, I thought that was great what the writers did. But they were forced to they were forced to rush things, do you know what I mean? And I, I, again I think they did an excellent job. It just it just would have been so nice to see where the writers were gonna take it. You know, Joss would share some things with me um, about what he was planning for the future, but I think unfortunately he knew in his heart, you know, even in the beginning of the second season that we probably weren't gonna last. He just kind of felt it like he was having a, he was having issues early on already. And I, you know, he's been in this business long enough, and probably two people he really knew, but didn't share it with anybody, that he probably wasn't going to see anything past the second season, unfortunately. What, what would you have liked to have seen? Um, with I, my character? I really, oh man, um, <laughs> I, I kind of thought the same way that you did. I, with the tenure jump, they did it exquisitely with what they had to work with and the time scale that they had, but I would have really loved to get to know Paul more on a personal level because his, you know, his arc took him through such a, a shift in his own sense of like, he was doing what he thought was right, even though before had thought it was completely wrong, and, but he was finding the, like, the core of that, and I would have really liked to see that brought out um, almost like the same way that Echo developed her own s sort of, it's almost the same thing, like she found that kernel of herself within that. I would have really loved to see Paul's progression throughout that as well. Yeah, it was, it was just, it was kind of, it, unfortunately, it's kind of jumped over. It's kind of yeah. jumped over. And it would have been nice to have, to have that, yeah. Um, well, you know what? We got two seasons, and I, I got to work with some really incredible people, so. But thank you for the support. I really appreciate that. I just rewatched the show about a month ago, and I just absolutely love it still. It just every time I watch it, I notice new things, and it's fantastic. That's so thank awesome. you so much for. Thank you very much. Um, I was curious, what was your like favorite show to work on? Like that had the most fun experiences, both on and off screen, with some of the other actors, whether it's House Hard, Dollhouse, or um, every show that you know, a lot of significant shows that I've worked on, where I've actually had an arc, or I worked with them for a number, you know, a number of episodes or years. Uh, you know, there's always you have a blast. You know, I had a blast with Supernatural Boys, but I only got to work with them for six episodes. It was a good, it was good spread out over ten, 10 months or something. So that was great. It's good to get comfortable. It's you know one of the hard things for an actor is when you come onto a show that's so established and has been happening for a while. Uh, you know, there's nerves in the beginning, and it's you know you're being brought into a family, so everyone knows each other. They're very comfortable with each other. Uh, uh, luckily, the boys in this show they, they they take you in very warmly, and, and you know. Once you do get comfortable, you just joke around, you're robbing the jokes, and you're having a blast on set. I would have to say it was Battlestar, though. You know, that, that was a, uh, not to be negative, but I don't, I don't know that I'll ever have an experience like that again. But we are still so close, most of us. But, um, we're all dear friends. It was such an incredible series to work on. It was a very important series. And uh, you, you learned early on how, how, how important that show was. And, um, that we were part of something very, very important and different. And uh, yeah, I, I, would, I, I would always look back very, very fondly on that show. It's probably like one of the most formative for me and, and uh, important shows that I've done. And I'm, I'm just so blessed to still be good friends with all those people, you know, whenever I see them. I'm gonna see the next weekend, actually. We're doing a show in, in Seattle. And uh, it's, it's the first show that Grace Park has ever done. First convention. So it's a big deal. She's a dear friend of mine, and she's just been too busy, and she's just never done a convention. And so she's coming to this one in Seattle, so we're all kind of excited about it. Because most of us have done a lot of shows, but she hasn't, so, yeah. Thank you. Uh, one more, real quick. Okay. Thanks for coming. Uh, Thank you for having me. Throughout your career, what role would you say uh, provided you with the most growth as an actor, and why? Um, 
I would I, I would have to say um, I would have to say Battlestar again because when I came in there, um, a lot of us the supporting cast we were very we were young actors we were green we had talent but you know we were new and we were working with veterans like Edward James Almost and Mary McDonald who've been working in this business for 45 years both Academy and were nominees and then on top of that we were also surrounded by uh, a number of British actors who were very, very talented, who came from theater and, and had also been working for a number of years. When you're surrounded by that much talent and actors of that caliber, you either step up to the plate or you don't. That was a huge, huge learning experience for me. And I probably you know, learned the most on that show that, that, that I have in any other show. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth Tallow, before we, we say goodbye to you, have you gotten a chance to talk about your web series? A, a little bit. Because Those, you're producing this. This is not just something you're yes, in. Yes, this is something I'm producing. Also, Rift World is something I'm producing. Who here hasn't seen it? Who has not seen Tom Lowe's web series? There's a whole lot of you who hasn't seen it. Dear well, God, what's wrong with you? You know what I'm having, guys. <laughs> well, I hope you're happy. If, if the goal was, let's make Tom Lowe cry. Well, mission accomplished. <laughs> so listen, you guys, just so you know, this web series, each episode is five to seven minutes. You could marathon this thing in under 45 minutes. <laughs> Have a break. Get a cup of coffee, juice, an alcoholic beverage. <laughs> Are you working for the airlines? <laughs> Thank you. Sit back, get comfortable, and run through my episodes. Check it out, you guys. It's fun. I produced it. Riftworldchronicles.com. Okay. Look it up. It's very easy to see. It's online, you can see it anywhere on the planet as long as you have Wi-Fi. Support, retweet it, because if you guys do, I can possibly get a second season. Rift World. Yeah. The second he leaves the stage, he's gonna tweet that out again. Everybody here who follows you. Everybody follows him, right? Yeah. He's gonna tweet that out the second he leaves the stage to remind you again. It's gonna you, guys, you guys have been fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, you guys. It's okay!